Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to Newstos. Yeah, that's right. I'm back after taking a bit of a short break last week. I I do apologize for the delay in videos, but I, I you know, I, I had to take a little bit of a break, spend some time with my wife and all that good stuff. But, you know, the good news here is that I am back today and we do have a doozy of a video to start the week off with. We do have some pretty big updates to talk about, including that Microsoft Activision Blizzard acquisition. As the FTC, they might be setting up to approve the deal sooner than some of us originally expected. At the very least, this is a major step in the process of this nearly $70 billion buyout. So, of course, we'll talk about that one today. Also, Xbox Game Pass, they did reveal some more games for the month of July, including another big Ubisoft title. As always, you just gotta love Xbox Game Pass, so we'll talk about that one as well. To start things off today, though, we're actually going to talk about an upcoming day one release for PlayStation Plus Extra. Stray is set to release tomorrow on July 19th, marking the newly tiered subscription service's first day one title, and seemingly, it looks like it's going to be a great get on Sony's part. Stray has been garnering quite a bit of attention as of recent for its beautiful steampunk world, where you get to play as none other than, than well, a cat. It, it does seem like a little bit of an odd combination on paper, but it does look surprisingly good, and, well, about that, reviews are out now, and they pretty much seem to confirm some of the the hype that's surrounding this game. It does currently sit at an 84 overall score on Metacritic with 58 positive reviews and only 10 mixed reviews. So critics definitely seem to like this game, describing it as a short but overall fun experience while also having some emotional beats to its story. It sounds like Stray can be completed in around 8 hours or so, and you can play it on PC or PlayStation by purchasing it for $30 or instead, and this here's the beauty of these subscription services, you can instead download it day one at no extra cost if you have PlayStation Plus Extra or, of course, Premium. So, again, I, I think that this is a really good start for Sony's subscription service here, and hopefully they'll continue to invest in these interesting day one titles like Stray moving forward. Now, speaking of Sony, they just closed their $3.6 billion acquisition of Bungie. They, of course, announced their intent to acquire them earlier this year in January, and now here we are about six months later, and they've officially gotten it through regulations, as was to be expected, making Bungie the newest part of PlayStation's family. So, big congrats to Bungie and Sony here, though once again, they did re-clarify that this buyout was not for exclusive titles. That is the thing about this acquisition. Bungie did re clarify that even though they are officially a part of Sony now, they are still preserving their independence and that their games moving forward, including the massively popular Destiny, will remain multi-platform. So, this acquisition won't necessarily be as noticeable as some of Sony's other buyouts, per se, because, again, Bungie wasn't really acquired for exclusive games. Instead, from everything that's been relayed to us as fans, this acquisition was more to leverage Bungie's expertise of live service games. Bungie has proven to be one of the best in the entire industry at making live service games, as we've seen with Destiny. And Sony, they want that knowledge to be a part of their studios as their commitment to these style of games are really incredible increasing as of recent. They are looking to release 10 live service games over the next four years, and Bungie's expertise will be of great importance in making these games a success. They can use that knowledge of Bungie's to really make these games even better. Now, I have seen some people out there kind of say that Sony overpaid for Bungie, and I guess to an extent, I can understand that sentiment just because, again, this buyout won't immediately be noticeable for PlayStation fans, but I think in the long run, Sony will make their money back here. Destiny is a highly successful franchise, and I suspect that Bungie will release more successful games in the future that could be quite the cash cow for Sony. Either way though, big congrats to Bungie and Sony on the completion of this acquisition. Now, the other major acquisition that we've really talked about all year long is the Microsoft Activision Blizzard buyout. This, without a doubt, is one of the biggest gaming stories in history, as Activision Blizzard and their many, many story franchises could officially become a part of Xbox. This, quite frankly, is a potentially industry-changing acquisition, so we're all just kind of sitting at the edge of our seats, waiting to see what happens next. 
Well, we are starting to get closer as we did get a big update over the weekend. Microsoft has reportedly now provided the FTC with information that it's looking for. Now, why this is so important is because once the FTC has the information that it needs, they will then have 30 days to respond. In other words, the FTC theoretically could approve the acquisition by August, marking a major, and I mean a major win for Microsoft. We'll kind of get back to that here in just a moment, but once the FTC receives all the needed information, there's really only three ways this can go. They'll review it, and by the end of the 30-day deadline, they'll either let it go unchallenged, which is exactly what Microsoft obviously wants here, or instead, they could negotiate and add some stipulations to the acquisition. I don't think that that's very likely, though, and the reason I say that is because Microsoft, they already stated that popular franchises like Call of Duty will remain multi-platform, and as we discussed a few weeks prior to this, they, they do have the largest communication and media labor union fully backing the acquisition, being the CWA. As you can see, Microsoft has been very proactive at getting ahead of any type of concerns that the FTC might have. So I, I really don't foresee any type of problem there either, and that leads us to the last and final option that the FTC could take, and that would be for them to seek to stop the acquisition by filing a preliminary injunction in federal court. Now, I really don't think that they'll do that either just because I, I feel like that it would be very difficult to argue against this acquisition really in any shape or form. Even after acquiring Activision Blizzard, Xbox still would not be the biggest game company in the world. And as we just talked about with Sony, well, they've been acquiring several studios themselves, so I really don't foresee any type of problem here. However, one thing about this story is still a little unclear, and that's whether or not Activision Blizzard has already given the FTC all the information that they need to. According to the FTC guidelines, both companies have to send the necessary information before the 30-day review can take place. If both have, though, well, then the FTC could theoretically approve the acquisition as early as August. Now, this does not mean that the acquisition will be 100% complete, as they still have to get approval from from places like the UK as well, which they, they do have a deadline for September 1st, but if the FTC approves, then suddenly the chances of this acquisition will dramatically increase as this was very possibly the biggest hurdle for them to get over. This could lead to a little bit of a domino effect where other regulators start to approve as well. Now, we heard earlier this year that this acquisition was moving fast, but with this news here, you know, you do have to wonder if they could complete this by the end of 2022, and that would be massive for the Xbox brand, especially Xbox Game Pass. Xbox did have some big 2022 delays, but if they could get this deal done before the end of the year, well, suddenly things are looking a lot more exciting as a ton of games would pretty much immediately come to Xbox Game Pass, as we saw them do with Bethesda. But then also there is a possibility that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 could launch day one into Game Pass this holiday. Even next year, you have games like Diablo 4 that could launch directly into Xbox Game Pass day one. Xbox's goal has been very clear though. I think regardless of exclusivity and all that stuff, they want Game Pass to grow, and that's what this acquisition really does. Game Pass subscribers are definitely going to win in this case, and without a doubt, this will help Game Pass grow, maybe even dramatically. Now, about Xbox Game Pass, though, they did just announce six more games for the month of July. We can actually take a look here where you can see it includes Torment, Tides of Numenera, As Dusk Falls, Inside, MotoGP 22, Watch Dogs 2, and then Sins of Solar Empire Rebellion. Now, I think that this is actually a pretty good lineup of games headed up by As Dusk Falls. This is a game published by Xbox themselves and launches day one on July 19th, of course, being tomorrow. It's an interactive drama, aka a visual novel type of game, so it's a little bit more niche, and I do understand that. But reviews for As Dusk Falls, they started to roll out today, and it currently sits at a 76 overall score on Metacritic. 38 of those reviews are positive, 14 are mixed, and then only 2 are negative. From all of the things that I've seen and heard though, it sounds like that it has a solid story, and fans of the genre will like it. So I'm definitely curious in As Dust Falls, and I really do like its art style a lot. I think it looks, it looks different to say the least. And again, it will launch tomorrow on July 19th. So definitely keep an eye out for that game, and you can actually preload it right now. 
The big AAA release here, though, would be Watch Dogs 2. This is yet another big Ubisoft game coming over to Game Pass, and this follows a trend that we've really seen all year long. They, of course, launched Rainbow Six Extraction in the Game Pass earlier this year, but then they also brought over Assassin's Creed Origins with its next generation enhancements, Far Cry 5, that was another one, and now, as you can see here, Watch Dogs 2. So they definitely seem to have a really good partnership going right now, and there's a good chance that we will start to see more from them going forward. Forward. It definitely seems like Ubisoft is all in on Xbox Game Pass as of this moment. I do want to highlight two other games here though, the first of which would be Inside. Inside was actually one of the highest rated games that released last generation with a 91 overall score on Metacritic, and it's often viewed as one of the best independent games really to ever release. It is a puzzle platformer with just so much atmosphere to it, and it does have a rather interesting cryptic story. It's not a very long game per se, if I remember right it takes like 3-5 to five hours to complete or something like that, but if you haven't already played this game, you absolutely need to change that if you're a Game Pass subscriber. Definitely go check out Inside. And really, I can say the same thing about Torment Tides of Numenera. This is an NX Owl RPG that acts as a bit of a spiritual successor to Torment Planescape. Now, Planescape is often viewed as one of the greatest stories in games, and it's really a unique experience, and that's kind of what Tides of Numenera tries to do as well. Now, don't expect this to be necessarily a combat-heavy game, that's not what you're going to get with this, but if you like Planescape or games like Disco Elysium, this is a game definitely worth a try. Game Pass, though. I mean, really, this is just a service that just continues to give and give. And I think that, as you can see here, there are several games here worth trying out for the second half of July. Let me know, though, which one of the games here are you most excited to play for yourself? Now, one last topic that we're going to talk about is Ghost of Tsushima and Sucker Punch. Sucker Punch did post this up over on Twitter this weekend, which says, This weekend marks two years since the release of Ghost of Tsushima. We are blown away by all the support since then and so grateful for all of you. Thank you to everyone who has played and shared this journey with us. Here are just some of the amazing stats since launch. Now, these stats include playtime, they include photos taken, but most interestingly, it shows that Ghost of Tsushima has sold nearly 10 million copies. As you can see here, it shows 9.73 million copies of Ghost of Tsushima has been sold, which is absolutely spectacular, especially for a new IP like this. You know, it's really hard for any game to sell 10 million units. That is a big achievement, a big milestone. But especially when it comes to new IP, it's very rare for new IP to come in and sell 10 million units. So I think that this kind of goes to show you how much fans really love this game. And that was one of the cool things about Ghost of Tsushima because not only did it you know, sell well in places like the United States or places like Europe, but it also did very well over in Japan. It ended up being a big hit over in Japan as well. So Ghost of Tsushima was really popular worldwide and you're seeing that here with a selling 9.73 million units. Now, it will be really interesting to see how Sucker Punch follows Ghost of Tsushima up, though. Now, here recently, they said that they're not working on a new Sly Cooper game. They're not working on Infamous. So, that really only leaves two choices here. They're either probably working on a new IP, or they're working on a Ghost of Tsushima sequel. Now, we've talked about on the channel various times by this point, but based off of some job listings out there, it does seem to suggest that they are working on a Ghost of Tsushima sequel. And because, I mean, this game has sold nearly 10 million million units being a new IP. I, I don't think that that would be overly surprising, but yeah, I, I guess we'll just kind of see how all this plays out. Either way though, big congrats to Sucker Punch and Sony for all their success with Ghost of Tsushima. Let's go take a look at the poll of the day though, where I asked you all, out of the upcoming 2022 Nintendo Switch exclusives that's been confirmed so far, which are you most excited for? And the results here was highly surprising with Bayonetta 3 coming out in first place with 29% of the votes, then second place being Pokemon Scarlet and Violet with 28%. Xenoblade 3 took third place at 24%, then you have Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope at 10%, and then Splatoon 3 at 9%. Like I said, the results here were highly surprising as I, I really was not expecting Bayonetta 3 to come out in first place. I, I was for sure that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet would win this one as, you know, the Pokemon franchise is just so massively popular. But it still is really cool to see Bayonetta 3 just get so much recognition here. The Bayonetta franchise has been exceptional up to this point, 
and th these games aren't necessarily your massive just big time sellers like you would see with games like Zelda, Pokemon, and so on and so forth. But I mean, these are really good hack and slash titles and to see them get this much recognition from the hardcore community, that is definitely a positive sign going forward. I think that some of the the hype surrounding this game's release date for such a long time has built over the years and you know, hopefully Bayonetta 3 sells really well this holiday when it releases. Now, as for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, though, it did come in a close second place here. And this is obviously your big Nintendo Switch title for this holiday. This is going to be a big hitter for the Nintendo Switch that will go on to sell millions and millions of copies as we've seen with every mainline Pokemon game to date. So Scarlet and Violet is going to be huge this holiday. I, I would say that I'm probably going to vote for Scarlet and Violet here just because I am a big Pokemon fan but still there there's a lot of really good nintendo switch exclusives releasing this year i'm definitely excited for bayonetta 3 i'm really excited for xenoblade 3 releasing just later this month and then also sparks of hope and splatoon 3 i mean I mean, these are great franchises as well. I think that Nintendo fans, they definitely have a lot to look forward to throughout the year of 2022, and there's still a chance that we might see a few surprises as well. There is that potential chance that we could get a release date for Advance Wars Reboot Camp, and then there's also those rumors kind of circulating right now of a Metroid Prime remake. I'm really, really hoping that one's true, but I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see how all that plays out. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.